Hello guys, in this video I'm going to show you how these two machines can be connected with each other using CV inputs and outputs. It's Behringer Crave, it's Behringer TD3. First of all, why I decided to make such kind of video and tutorial. On Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, I see lots of people who own some kind of Behringer synth. And I see lots of people who own more than one Behringer synth. As in my case, I have these two guys and Behringer Neutron. Uh, so, if you have several semi-modular synth, there are lots of combinations of how to connect them between each other. All Behringer synth have uh, CV inputs and outputs, more or less. Uh, so, TD3 is not a semi-modular synth, however, it has several inputs and outputs. And in this video, I'm gonna share some ideas of how to connect and use these CV inputs and outputs with another synth. In my case, it's Behringer Crave. And before we start, if you're new on my channel, you may be very interested in the Behringer Crave videos. I made several big tutorials on sequencer, making bass, making other timbers. So find them on my channel and I hope you enjoy them. Okay, let's start. Uh, let me explain you how these machines are connected to each other. So they both uh, have USB connected to my computer uh, with Ableton Live. And when I push play, You hear some drum beat, you hear the sequence from Crave and another one from TD3. Uh, they're both synced with the USB. You may use only one USB to receive uh, the clock, the tempo, and use a MIDI cable to send this clock to another synth. So it's up to you. It doesn't matter. I tried both variants, it works the same. So for me, USB is more comfortable. Uh, the next thing I should mention is the following. These two guys are great for bass. However, if you use them both for bass, you're gonna have some problems with the low end, some conflicts, um, problems with the kick and so on. So I recommend you to use one of them as bass machine and another one like something else, an octave higher so these problems are not gonna appear. Uh, now I'm gonna show you how each of them sounds in solo so you can remember the sequence in its clear timbre before we made it more complicated. So it's Crave. And it's TD3. Both. At the moment uh, you hear they, they sound in the same octave. And it's a bit difficult to recognize what happens with the bass. Uh, they kind of mess with each other. So I'm gonna make Grave an octave higher. Let's see how it sounds like. I'm gonna add some echo, especially for Crave, it is higher. So the overall sound is a bit clearer than it was before when the octave was down. Uh, so let's try the very, very first connections. I'm gonna use the TD3 gate output and connect it to the sequence hold. And let's hear it. Uh, so you may know from my previous videos by yourself that this hold input kind of freezes the step when the input signal comes into it. Gate out sends the signal here, so each step of the sequence on TD3 generates this gate output, and each time I have a node on TD3, this sends the signal to this hold input, and each time some step is frozen. Let's hear it again. Let's hear it without TD3 and compare with it and without. You see, this hold appears quite often, because I have a lot of notes. I 
have another sequence with the less amount of notes. So the hold appears not that often. Uh, we can also connect this uh, gate output from TD3 to uh, reset input. Uh, so what this reset input does, each time it receives a signal, it drops the sequence to its starting point. So it was on the 7 step, for example, it got signal and it drops to the first one. Uh, and again, each note of TD3 generates this gate and each time the note is played on TD3, it's gonna reset the sequence on Crave. Another sequence. So there are a lot of combinations. Let's have some tweakings. Without it, and again, I mentioned this in my previous video you can do these connections without any clicks. Just right so during your performance or gym, and you are safe, you, nobody gonna hear some clicks, distortion, and so on. And this gives you the source for developing your uh, parts, developing your sequences. It was playing in one way, and then you develop it, evolve it in something new with just these two connections gate out to reset or hold. would be great if I use this gate output and connect it to my uh, multiple input and then took this multiple output connected to reset and then the, the other one to hold but in my case I don't know guys let me know if you have the same issue when I use multiple to uh, connect it to reset or hold look what I have I'm frozen on the first step or I'm frozen with the hold. But if I use this connection directly without these multiples, it works fine. So I'm very interested about your crave. Do they have the similar behavior as mine? Maybe it's only my issue and I should contact the tech support. Yeah, let's go further. We're gonna connect this gate output to envelope gate input. So without this connection, each node generates gate, gate launches the envelope, and my envelope influences the volume, and in my case, the filter. Now, the gate is gonna be generated by the nodes from the other synth, from TD3. And this gives us interesting results and I would say unpredictable results because the gate from the other synth is going to uh, open filter, give some accents, uh, you're going to hear it. Let's hear Crave only. Without it. Another sequence. So 
So you hear how the sequence is broken because the accents are shifted and gates are received from other nodes, not from this sequence. Now let's try to connect this gate output to filter input. I'm going to close it a bit. So here the filter is opened a bit uh, wide, the all the way up. I don't want this uh, so wide and I'm gonna use this mix input and use mix output to control with this knob the portion of filter opening. So what I hear now, these two sequences are blend with each other and I perceive it as one single sequence, but it's kind of complicated. So they are a single uh, creature at the moment. Uh, the next thing we're gonna try is to connect this gate output to oscillator modulation. Again, I'm gonna do it with this knob. I'm gonna choose square wave. Uh, oscillator modulation is set to external, OSC mod. and mod destination is width. Now let's try it. You hear these kind of bleeps, uh, plum, plum. This is very interesting. I couldn't get such results with my grave only. So the external sequence is great for these kind of things, unpredictable things. Uh, okay, the next connection we're gonna try is to connect this time its CV output uh, to some of the parameters on Crave. I'll start with the oscillator CV. So it's gonna modulate the pitch of my oscillator. Let's hear it. So my original sequence uh, turns into some lead part, some melody. It plays on the high notes. Let's uh, hear it together. And we can combine it with gate output. Hold. I like this. It's like a bird singing. Uh, let's hear it again. Reset. I'm really impressed. I wasn't uh, ready to this. Uh, connection, so I'm surprised as well as you. Uh, another thing we should try is to connect this CV output to filter input. Let's close it.
go to Aurex. So how it works, the higher the node on my sequence, the more filter is opened. Let's compare it with A sequence and B sequence. Uh, B has more higher nodes than A and let's uh, compare it how filter behaves. So in this case, uh, the filter is modulated by two sources, uh, my envelope and external CV. And it sounds in a very interesting way. Without it. With it. All together. And again, I feel this kind of unity between these two sequences and the synths. Let's make another connection. CV output to LFO rate input and LFO output to filter input. Let's hear it. So you hear how the LFO is being changed and this gives us kind of glitchy sounds because the synchronization is kind of uh, broken. LFO can't be synced with the clock. So this gives us a bit of uh, randomness. Or we can use it without this connection, just uh, change the mod source to LFO. Maybe it sounds a bit complicated, but if you spend a bit more time to catch the right LFO position, uh, you're gonna get more easy to perceive results. Okay, let's uh, put it back. Uh, filter is modulated by envelope, and this CV output goes to resonance input. Maybe it's not that exciting how the previous modulations were. I still might try this connection. So here in this case, the resonance parameter is being changed a bit and it gives again some kind of randomness. So previously we sent outputs from TD3 to Crave inputs. And now let's do it vice versa. We're gonna send signals from Crave to TD3. And what we're gonna try, we're gonna connect filter input on TD3 to LFO output on Crave. And this gives us the very simple uh, filter modulation. Thank you. 
And this gives us this uh, wow effect. It's quite gentle, but still we can hear it. Another thing we should try uh, is to connect oscillate output, pulse or so again to this filter input. In this case, we hear the combination of two sequences on only TD3. You see the volume is all the way down. At the moment, this sequence uh, sounds a bit uh, louder than the original one. So let's use again our mix connection, uh, CV mix to filter input and uh, so output to mix to. And with this knob, I'm gonna set the volume. <laughs> I guess you don't like uh, how it sounds at the moment again because the notes of the two sequences uh, overlaps on each other. Uh, I'm gonna try to set a high octave to the grave and let's see, maybe it will help. So it sounded fine to my taste and as you have seen uh, I used the note in position and it all together it sounded not so messy and overlapping as the previous example when Crave sounded a couple octaves down. Okay let's make another connection. Uh, this time I'm gonna send to filter in uh, noise from Crave. Let's hear it. So again, with this connection, noise to mix to, uh, mix out to filter in, and then with this knob I can give some kind of accents manually. Uh, and it sounds a bit like a snare drum. It gives lots of rhythm and groove due to these accents and this feeling of snare drum, like a jazz drummer uses uh, brushes. Then you can use accent on TD3 to emphasize this uh, noise. So now the noise is added in kind of automatic way. Uh, previously I added this noise manually, but with the accent all the way up, it adds a nice portion of noise on each step with the accent uh, function.
really sounds like a snare or clap. Uh, let's see another connection. It, sound, it sounds a bit similar to oscillator output pulse or so. This time we're going to uh, use uh, filter output and send it to filter input. Uh, again, we get two sequences from one synth, but if you compare it with saw or pulse output, it was the signal fully open. But if we use uh, filter output, uh, we can cut some frequencies before the signal goes to TD3. And this gives us a more gentle result. You hear how the sequence uh, sounds, it's so dirty and distorted. It's not the same as the output from the grave. Grave gives a clean sound and TG3 with this connection, I guess this filter is a bit uh, overdriven. And this gives us uh, this dirty sound. So I tried three CV connectors on TG3, filter in, CV out and gate out. And I used lots of uh, inputs and outputs on Crave. Uh, however, you can get even more interesting and complicated results when you do connections inside Crave itself and then uh, communicate it with the TG3. Again, uh, you should watch my previous videos where I made some very, very complicated uh, patches uh, where I used up to eight patch cords, if I'm not mistaken. And then this complicated patch connected to TD3 with all the things we mentioned today. I guess the results can be very, very interesting, unpredictable, and you may get a wide range of timbers, of sounds for your experiments, jams, performances, and so on. Uh, let me know if you have some other ideas about the connection of these two machines. For me, it would be interesting to try what you think, your ideas. Let's exchange our ideas. And for those of you who are not familiar with me and my channel, I should mention that I made many patches and sequences for Behringer Grave, and I made sequences for TD3. You're going to see the links in video description and the very first comment. So if you like the way I make patches and sequences, you may also want to get these patches and sequences. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, there are going to be some more. Let me know what you think in your comments and see you in next videos.